Today's project is somewhat easy. It's, a, it's only one piece, but it's all interior cuts and not terribly difficult, but a little challenging for someone new to the scroll saw. It's this Jesus Saves Cross. It comes from this set of plans and I'll show you how to make it step by step. I had a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade in the scroll saw from my last project, which is the perfect choice for this project. I'll be making this cross from half inch thick sapele. I only had four quarter stock on hand in this wood, which would have been too thick for this piece. So I planed the board long enough to make two of these crosses on my DeWalt thickness spiner. As always, I'll do the inside cuts first, but it doesn't matter where I start on them. I chose to start at the top. With half inch stock and a number five blade, I can make all the cuts needed for this piece. For those very sharp angles, I sometimes cut from the pilot hole to a corner, then I back the blade up to the pilot hole and swivel it 180 degrees. Then I back it, the blade into the corner dull side first. Rather than having a very wide swing, it only takes a short one to line up the blade with the next line and start the cut. It's amazing how this tiny blade can make these turns so easily. As I've gained experience with the scroll saw, I've learned what blades can and cannot do. Once you know what can be done and you've gained some experience, you can look at odd shapes and quickly determine the best way to cut them. This next part definitely qualifies as an odd shape. There are four corners and one very sharp point at the bottom. I had drilled the pilot hole near the top of the shape. I cut from the pilot hole to one of the corners, then backed up to the pilot hole, flipped the piece 180 degrees, and cut to the opposite corner. I went back to that first corner and cut along the line up to the top point. I made the turn for the angle, then cut to the first point. This caused the scrap from the top half of the shape to pop out of the way. I used a large open space to line the blade up with the cut line on one side, then followed it to the point on the bottom. Then I backed up to the waist area again and moved the blade to cut down the other side. I cut down to the point and was left with a nice sharp point at the bottom of the shape. This next shape is more or less a triangle so that you will encounter it frequently on scroll saw projects. I usually drill the pilot holes near the right angle since this is the easiest to cut. Once you reach the corner, you stop feeding the workpiece into the blade and back it up very slightly. This gives you room to turn the workpiece 90 degrees to align the blade with the cut you want to make down this first side. Then you start feeding the wood into the blade again. This skill will become second nature with practice, just like any other learned mechanical skill. If you are having any trouble following the cut line exactly, try to stay on the inside of the line on the waist side of the cut. That way you can always go back later and trim the cut to the line. It's always possible to make a little hole larger, but once it's too big, you can't go back and make it smaller. When you come to the next angle, you follow the same procedure. Cut right up to the intersection, then back the blade off slightly and turn the workpiece. Once you're aligned with the newer direction, start cutting again. The same procedure is followed at the third angle. When I started the next cut, I felt I was getting abnormal vibrations from the blade. This was not the good vibrations that the Beach Boys sang about in the 60s. It was an indication of a problem. My first thought was that the blade was loose in the lower blade holder. I finished the cut and then checked that out. It turned out that the lower blade holder was not only tight, it was so tight I had to get a pair of pliers to loosen it. Since it was not a tightness issue, I decided to replace the blade. I'd made lots of cuts with it, so it was likely time to replace it anyway. Having to change the blade gives me an opportunity to point out one of the excellent features of the Pegasus scroll saw. Both the upper and lower blade holders feature thumb screws to tighten the blade, so no tools are needed. I've worked with scroll saws that require some sort of tool, and they can be cumbersome and slow you down anytime you need to change a blade. You can see how long it takes to change a blade on the Pegasus scroll saw. The blade change solved the problem, and cutting moved back to being smooth and vibration free. That's another skill that develops over time, the ability to sense when your machine is behaving abnormally. This is the last cut on the vertical part of the cross which spells out the word saves. Those triangular cuts on the sides of the bottom S required a bit of skill and patience, part of why I enjoy using the scroll saw so much. Because some of the details on these projects are so small, I use a lighted magnifier with my scroll saw. 
However, when I'm recording video, I leave the light off because it's so bright that even on the lowest setting, it washes out the detail in the picture. I highly recommend using a lighted magnifier. The other accessory that most scrollers find is difficult to do without is a foot switch. You plug the foot switch into your wall outlet, then plug your scroll saw into the foot switch. You then leave the scroll saw power switch in the on position all the time. When you depress the foot switch, the scroll saw runs. As soon as you let up pressure on the foot switch, the saw stops. This makes it possible to keep both hands on the workpiece at all times, and it also makes it possible to stop the saw instantly if you need to. With all the inside cuts made, I can move on to the final cutting steps, the shape of the cross itself. These are all 90 degree cuts, and for the sake of accuracy, I'll make them all in the same way. Since the horizontal piece of the cross ends near the piece of sepalia it's on, I started cutting at the edge of the board, cut along the line to the intersection with the vertical piece, stopped, and backed the blade out again. Next, I moved to the bottom of the board and cut up the left side of the cross until I reached the intersection where I'd stopped the cut from the horizontal piece. That left me with a scrap piece that was big enough to set aside for use on some future project. I used the same technique for the rest of the cuts around the outside of the cross. I started at the outside, cut along the line until I reached an intersection, and then backed out to the edge. I swiveled the workpiece 90 degrees and then made the next cut in the same manner. Although I am perfectly capable of making 90 degree cuts in the other manner, I chose to use this method because all of the intersections were so near the edge of the board. This is the completed Jesus Saves Cross. I finished it with two coats of Minwax Warm Set and Spray Polyurethane to bring out the beauty of the wood grain so it will last on display for many years. I would appreciate it and will respond to any comments on the video. A like will tell the YouTube algorithm to show this video to others and help me to grow this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I release my next video. But you don't have to wait until then. There's a link to the next suggested video on the screen right now.